but at the point at which we we say no it's something that is relationally based it's something that is tapping into who Jesus is and what he does in and through us at that point I think we're starting to understand what Christian parenting is really about Hello and welcome to the Dad and Lad podcast. This is episode two, and this week we are looking at Christian parenting. My name is Jonathan, and I'm with my dad, Lawson, and I'm the lad, and we serve with Scripture Union Canada. And in this podcast, we talk about children and family ministry. Last week, we looked at uh, Christian grandparenting and the important role that grandparents have in raising up the next generation to know and love Jesus. Now we're going to Christian parenting, which is as grand um, and as important. And uh, we recognize that there's going to be so much that we could talk about. Um, We're going to be looking at kind of the theological grounding of what it means to be a Christian parent. So that's the direction we're heading. And so, so dad, let's just make some, some definitions to start off. Let's kind of define some terms and let's kind of understand uh, what Christian parenting is and what is it not. Um, Secular parenting would be those who do not know Jesus and who are parenting from a perspective, a worldly perspective. That's what we use the word secular to mean. Um, What is secular parenting? Let's start there and let's work our way up to what Christian parenting is. So can you maybe just do a bit of a definition of what secular parenting is? I think secular parenting is... It's parenting that is directed to equipping their children for to be successful in the world at large, looking to see how they can attend to their children's mental health and um, how they can prepare their children to access opportunities, uh, how they can develop their children's character, uh, and ultimately how they can help their children be successful mm. In life to come and I think a big part of that as well is is this desire of secular parents generally that their children would be happy and content in life yeah one of the, one of the articles that you wrote you referenced a study that was done um, and we will call this a secular study on parenting because uh-huh. it was just taking parents from across the world um, from a variety of different backgrounds uh, 5,000 parents from 16 countries just looking at the study here and it says they asked parents what was the number one goal they had in uh, mm-hmm. parenting. And the number one answer was happiness. That mm-hmm. their main goal was to make their children happy. Which is very interesting. Um, because that was the first place even over success, mm-hmm. um, stability, a good career, mm-hmm. safety, things like that. Across those 16 countries and 5,000 parents, the number one answer was just happiness. Right, And so... Could that be in, I know it's a very easy summary, but could that be just a, probably a, a general summary of what secular parenting's main goal is? Why not? I think that's, that's a good start. Well, it definitely reflects kind of what we understand the spirit of the air, the enemy tries to do, right? He tries to put our hope just in this earth, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he tries to make us, people think, he's the great deceiver and making people think that this is their only hopes. So they better just get happy and comfortable. Mm-hmm. And so it makes sense that parents would think the same they don't have a perspective on eternity, the end in mind. And I think that's kind of what we recognize with Christian parenting is where there needs to be a difference. Right. Before we get to that, um, within our Western context, do we fall prey to this though as well? The, the persuasion of uh, wanting just to make our kids happy. Um, is that kind of some of the goals that we can potentially fall into as well? I, I think so, and it's a probing question. I, I've been reading a book recently called What Most Parents Aren't Telling You. And what fascinates me in that book is the the top five concerns or values that both Christian and secular parents have are the same, hmm. according to the research uh, in this book that I'm reading. And, and, f- and faith formation and the importance of faith for their children uh, comes after the top five mm. for Christian parents. So that raises a big question for us. What, what are some of those top, top five? Do you know some of them just off the top of your head? Yes, yeah, some, some of the things I've already uh, mentioned, like the mental health of their children, uh, access to opportunities and the character development of their children. 
So these are top goals now, Christian or non-Christian yes. people. This as a parent. Okay, yeah. interesting. Now this would have these would probably have shifted over time, like historically mm-hmm. as mm-hmm. well, right? Like these goals. Yeah, I remember when I was a child and reading the literature when I became a young adult on what uh, what was important to parents then. Okay. Uh, their main concern was three things: uh, drugs, alcohol. And sex, and they like were con- not doing that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <Obviously>. <laughs> certainly for Christian parents, they didn't want their kids to be doing that. Interesting. So it was a big push, like in your time, of do not, do not, do not. They were do not, and it's interesting. Those things come very low down on the on what uh, Christian parents today are concerned about. Interesting. So today, that's not a no. Not it, so much it shifted in terms of concern. Interesting. Um, it'd also be interesting to see with all that emphasis on do not do this, do not do this, how many actually proportionally still, you know, right. fell into, <laughs> let's say the, the drugs, alcohol and sex. Um, it, it's just with a picture with that as, um, so often just within our Christian circles, we, we, we kind of promote that do not, do not, do not. Mm-hmm. And I heard a, a good illustration of how if you were at the top of a ski hill with a bunch of trees in your way. You wouldn't tell the person who's about to ski down the hill, do not hit the trees, do not hit the trees, do not hit the trees, because if they're only going to focus on the trees, they're going to hit the tree. (laughs) But if you told them, look to the end, um, get down to the bottom of the hill, uh, they would would navigate through. They might hit a tree still, but they would navigate through because their perspective changes. And I think that's a good reminder for us as Christians that... um, are it shouldn't be fear-based parenting or just a legalistic i guess mm-hmm. what i was trying mm-hmm. to get out of like do not do not our perspective needs to ultimately i like that be on christ right and that and that will that will navigate it's our very perspective good. very good um and so that's been an interesting shift generationally um i wonder what the implications are with now parents not putting a focus i think that could be a good thing in a way if they if they're not focusing on so much the do nots mm-hmm. um however I think naturally, um, parenting within Christian circles have almost been that kind of, there's still that legalistic of, mm-hmm. or just do this. There's a lot of things that are thrown at parents. There's so much pressure. I know as, as a parent myself, and I think especially mothers have so much pressure and, and as they watch each other, right. um, and whether it's not a legalistic thing or just trying to feel like they need to copy each other and imitate each other, there's a lot of pressure in thinking that Christian parenting just becomes down to doing a lot of things or not doing and not or not doing a lot of things and that can be very stressful i I think some of the not doing that we still see today which is very prevalent with christian parents is avoid swear words yeah avoid bad habits avoid immoral people uh, avoid inappropriate entertainment yeah uh, uh, watch out for fake news and false teaching and and avoid sin in general. You know, there's, there's still all of that stuff that's part of our parenting. It's, it's kind of like the, obviously you want all these things to happen, but it's, maybe if I put another illustration to it, it's rather than just trying to continually, like if we're throwing our children in the water, we're, tr- throwing, we're trying to continually save them. Right. Take this, take this life preserver, take this, mm-hmm. take this. The better thing is teach them how to swim, right? right. That would be like the, right. the ultimate way of fixing that problem. Teach them how to swim for themselves. So the question comes, how do we teach them how to swim? And I think the reference is, how do we teach them to fall in love with Jesus? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, in Third John, verse 4, it says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Right. And I think um, that takes a lot of pressure off so much of just trying to put up fires and do all these things. It's We're sending them on a trajectory. We're putting them on a perspective. And so I kind of think that that scripture really lends itself well to the main question today is what is Christian parenting and how is that unique to just being a Christian who's also a parent? So uh, how do you answer that? What, what, What perspectives do you have? I want to start by recognizing that, and I like the distinction you've made, one can be a Christian and one can parent. Yeah. And then there is what is Christian parenting? And 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 as I answer that question, I want to jump to the idea 
that it's uh, that it's participating in a divine activity, that it's a that it's a partnership with Jesus, that it's collaborating with what the Holy Spirit mm. wants to do with our children. That it's not a one-sided affair. It's not something that I do in my own strength. It's something that I do together with mm. in, 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 uh, as part of a teamwork, if you like, with God. Mm. And that, that jumps us into a whole other realm. Because when we're talking about uh, things that we should or shouldn't do, that's religious talk. That's stuff that Hindus and Muslims uh, are concerned about in their parenting. But at the point at which we, we say, no, it's something that is relationally based. It's something that is tapping into who Jesus is and what he does in and through us. At that point, I think we're starting to understand what Christian parenting is really about. So here we are in the thick of it as we talk about what Christian parenting is, and it comes down to this word relationship. We need to have a loving and abiding relationship with Christ. Like Deuteronomy 6 says, as parents, we need to first get God's word into us before we can get it into our children. We need to meet with Jesus so that our children can also meet with Jesus. And at Scripture Union, that's our desire, that we would help you and your family connect with Jesus and his story. Check out our bookstore online at scriptureunion.ca to check out the many resources that we have available. All right, let's get back into it now. And so partnership, that's that's where we're going. I think my, I'm just wondering, maybe one of the challenges in thinking that our partnership is with Jesus when it comes to parenting, and that's what Christian parenting is all about, a partnership with Christ. Mm-hmm. Maybe just when we look at the Bible, we, we see Jesus as what he is. He was a single man on this earth. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm just trying to think, right? And we recognize that, yeah, he's the Lord of our life and he came to save us. But maybe there's been that failure to think, oh, he's also the one that created each of us and right. our children belong to him. Um, just when we look at kind of like the historical narrative of his life, right? As right. a single man right. on this earth. but. Yeah, he is the one um, that our, our children belong to. So how do we even think about that from a different perspective? Because our children mean so much to us, mm-hmm. but Jesus loves them more, <laughs> you know? like Right, right. Uh, I, I love how you brought that out. Uh, I love uh, the identification that you have there, that our children are first and foremost his children. He is yet the parent Mm. of our children, capital uh, P. And and so that changes everything. Yeah, that's a freeing thought. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Because now the pressure isn't all on me as as a parent. No, he comes alongside. Uh, he's, uh, He's the one on whom I can draw on for patience and wisdom and power and provision and and the strength that I need from day to day to interact and nurture my children uh, in the way of the Lord. Yeah, and also recognition that when we fail, he won't fail. Yes, I love that. How amazing is that, that um, (laughs) Christ steps in when we might be failing as a parent, which we often do, and we always do. All of us. I can think even this morning when um, my son woke up at 4 a.m. and I was like, come on, I was getting frustrated. (laughs) And I checked myself he's just a he's a baby why am i getting frustrated that even in those moments of frustrations or lack of patience that um yeah christ steps in as well and so that's a really freeing perspective because it relies we can rely on his grace and yeah, we don't we don't parent alone we don't we don't parent alone and so one of the amazing pictures that jesus gave us of just life with him in general, but I think I want to explore this more in the context of parenting. Mm -hmm. It's in that beautiful text in John chapter 15, right? Of Jesus being the vine and we are the branches. Uh And we often think of that more as just kind of like our personal relationship with him, right? That he is the vine from where we get all our strength and power and we are the branches. And it says apart from him, we can do nothing Nothing. as it goes on Mm. to say. And, it says only through him that we can bear fruit. But 
I think not only in the individual sense, but I think what we're trying to understand is that in the whole family sense and the whole parenting sense mm-hmm. that um, we need to recognize our place as like branches grafted into Christ mm-hmm. within mm-hmm. this partnership, which um, maybe just exploring that picture as well is every branch is also in its unique place on that vine mm-hmm. and it has mm-hmm. its unique challenges and it has its unique uh, context. Um, and so that's not to say that we don't like learn from each other, from other parents and that we take mm-hmm. wisdom and we gather that, but it's the priorities of our first priority is to abide in Christ. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, and it's only out of that place of abiding. It's only out of that place where as parents, we are attending to our own relationship with him first that we are positioned to to parent our our children uh, we i think we need to recognize that it's parent christian parenting if you like to say it in a slightly different way is cooperating uh with with god mm. it's um it's joining him in what he's doing not asking him to join us in what what we doing uh, and and when we do that, uh, it makes all the difference. Christian parenting, therefore, is more than our parenting styles. It's more than parenting uh, methodology. Mm. It's relying on that mysterious, uh, transformational uh, relationship that exists because we're part of the vine, as 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 you say. Mm. So maybe. Um, what we're kind of laying the foundation of this being as the priority of Christian parenting is partnership with Christ Mm -hmm. and it's uh, relying on his power and his strength. Um, And without maybe pushing in the direction of here, all the principles of what a Christian parent should do, we're trying to avoid that. Yet at the same time, even within the promise of John 15, there are fruit that can be expected when we do that. Mm -hmm. So maybe what would the fruit of, abiding in Christ as parents, what would that look like? Um, what sort of things could you expect if you walked into a home where they parents were truly abiding in Christ? What sort of fruit would you expect to see uh, knowing that's a promise in God's word right. and maybe more taking it from that perspective rather than just like, here are the things you need to do. Maybe just what would, what would be the fruit? What would you see? I think first and foremost, we would see a home that is Christocentric. That uh, in, in everything, there is a humble dependence. There is a looking to Christ. Mm. There is a, a trust in him to be giving us the lead. It's, it's a family pressing into Jesus. It's a family interacting with Jesus. And it's a family living for, for Jesus. And... And I would want to add to that as well, that there is a sense of dependency on the Holy Spirit to guide and direct that family. And that would come out practically in in how the family prays together. It would come out practically in how they seek God's guidance and direction for what they should be about as a family. Yeah, just kind of going more with that practical perspective. Um, It would probably, yes, involve formal times as a family getting to God's word Mm -hmm. and exploring that creatively Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. unpacking scripture and praying together. But I think more so we would see informal settings and opportunities and times of every day of bringing our children back to Christ when uh, there's been a conflict or when uh, the, the siblings are not getting along mm-hmm. um, and the way we deal with that through our actual patience, through the way we uh, take time to pray as we walk along the road and we see uh, someone who's in need of help or whatever it is, there is uh, an organic, and I guess those are the kind of word, words that, that I would express, organic, informal, Holy Spirit-led, natural, ongoing teaching and modeling of faith that goes beyond just like a formal time of getting to God's word. And I think that would be, that's fruit that children would see if their parents were abiding in Christ 
Some of the language you're using is reminding me of what your grandfather, Papa, mm. uh, used to say. He used to say that we need to be spiritually natural and naturally spiritual. Mm. And, and I love that because I, I think that's part of what, uh, what needs to be happening in the home. That's what our Christian parenting needs to reflect. Yeah, and even with that, I think like we hope that as you're listening that this would only be a, a, a freeing thought of relying on the grace of Christ as, our parent, as, as we parent. Um, that there's also recognition that we can be vulnerable and open when we do fail. Mm -hmm. uh, because we will and, and we can also be open with our children when we fail and ask for forgiveness and we can model what that looks like when uh, you are getting disagreeing with your your spouse and you reconcile that um, all these things are what it means um, in the context of abiding in Christ of what Christian parenting truly is yeah to press back into another verse of scripture an Old Testament uh, verse uh, in Psalm 127, unless the Lord builds the house, hmm. the builders labor in vain. And I think that's what, we, what we're what really looking at here as a definition of Christian parenting. Uh, it's him first. It's, it's him uh, in, in action in the home. It's him speaking in and through us so that we are, as Christian parents, his conduit. Hmm. Uh, it's the recognition that uh, without him doing that building, uh, we will be parenting in vain. Yeah. Well, that that text also kind of reinforces one of the first things we learn about God as our creator and being created in his, in his image is mm -hmm. that we are his stewards, ambassadors on I this like earth. I like that. Mm -hmm. And the same way that as parents, they, just to recap once again, our children belong to God and we are his stewards of as we raise them. He's given us this amazing responsibility, right. but ultimately they still belong to him. Right. We're serving his plans and purposes, aren't we? Yeah. He's uh, built it. And now, now we need to step into that as a proper steward. Very good. I like that. So thanks for listening to this episode of Christian Parenting. We hope that you've had a good understanding of the framework of what Christian parenting is and what it isn't. We recognize that um, in comparison to secular parenting, which the number one goal is to statistically, they showed through surveys, just to bring happiness to, our, to children. As parents who love the Lord, our desire to be a Christian parent should be that they would walk in the truth of Christ. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful thing is Christ is the one who will partner with us to see that happen. Amen. So thank you. We'll see you next time. Hey, thanks so much for listening to the Dad and Lad podcast, where we love talking about children and family ministry. Next week, we're going to do a part two on Christian parenting. We're going to look at the nitty gritty practical ways of how we can steep our children, so to speak, in Christ and so they can grow to know and love him. So with that picture, go enjoy a cup of tea and we'll see you next week.